Berkeley was probably, in her, her time, the, the preeminent female artist in Pennsylvania. Um, she started actually her work here in the Capitol with a commission given to her by architect Joseph Houston for the governor's reception room. Um, and she painted that from 1902 to 1906. And when she was completed with that, um, in 1912, they asked her to finish the Senate and this commission and the Supreme Court as well. So all told, um, within this building, she's, she's done 43 murals. Um, so, and she worked 25 years of her life doing it. Um, and it wasn't just the Capitol, she did work outside of here, uh, private commissions. Um, at the Archives of American Art, she has the second largest collection of any American artist. So Violet Oakley is an artist who is very deeply embedded in history. And, and you know, I, I've said before, you know, there's not a, not a painting in the history of art that we know today that she didn't also know. That, you know, she was well-traveled, especially in Europe. You know, Violet Oakley was inspired by the beautiful, you know, Byzantine murals in Ravenna, Italy. She is like a sponge and she takes it all in and it comes out in a different way. You know, she's a figure of the American Renaissance, one of the most famous artists of the American Renaissance. I remember when I was studying to prepare for these paintings and for those in the Senate, I was to have some time, about four weeks, in Oxford. And I had a letter of introduction to the librarian of the Bodleian Library there. And I explained to him why I wanted to, to study law, not for the practice at the bar, but in order to, uh, to develop a series of paintings for the walls of a courtroom. And um, I said, therefore, I would like to read and study the history of law. And he looked at me and said, it has never been written. And I said, then I'll have to write it much to the amusement of the librarian of the Bodleian. The image in the Supreme Court mural series that's probably most famous is that image that's over the doorway with the gigantic letter L and superimposed over it is A and superimposed over it is W. So the, the first mural that you'll see when you walk in, and really the, the keynote, uh, is, the, is the keynote called Divine Law. So you have love, law, and wisdom. You can see represented there with the, the allegorical figure of the truth of law um, depicted in behind. And then you can see the water that kind of is depicted in behind all of the, the, the figure there of law. And that's a significant theme throughout all of the, you can see on the borders here, there's water on each of the borders of the murals as they run through, and that's kind of the unifying theme. Thought of that mural as you know, the opening of you know, a great illuminated manuscript of you know, the Middle Ages and how it would open up with an amazing decorated letter. And through L, A, and W, you see the face of divine law. I mean, for Violet Oakley, law as a concept was divine, and that's personified in the figure um, that you see through these overlapping letters, L-A-W, a beautiful woman with flowing blonde hair, and, you know, the flow of the hair intertwines with these letters. I mean, that is, you know, the idea of law personified in beauty. As you move along, she has um, William Penn as lawgiver depicted here. Uh, he's front and center, and then you have these famous um, other figures, uh, humanist thinkers uh, from the 16th, 17th century, uh, Locke, Rousseau, Montesquieu, Sir Thomas More, and then at the very top, um, she paints her, herself holding her book, uh, actually The Holy Experiment, which was the first series of murals that she did here for the, uh, the Capitol building, but that's her her, um, I guess, humbly submitting that her small contribu contribution to humanist thought is her, her idea of, of uh, the culmination of law here in the, the court chamber. And they are somewhat compacted and abbreviated. I have the Ten Commandments. And I think it was rather wonderful that nobody stopped me. 
I had, of course, to submit all my subjects to the commission before going on, and nobody prevented my putting the decalogue on the walls of this court. And then next is the Sermon on the Mount, or the Christian idea of revealed law, with the Beatitudes. I think it was something of an accomplishment also to have nobody stop me from putting the Beatitudes on the wall of this courtroom. Jesus Christ, in the Sermon on the Mount, revealing the Christian idea of law. The Beatitudes give positive statements of what shall be done, balancing the Decalogue statements of what shall not be done.